Welcome to the Mythbusters After Show. Tonight's episode is Bubble Boy. First question, why did you guys keep calling it bubble packaging rather than bubble wrap? Ah, the commerce is the reason for that. Bubble wrap is in fact a trademarked product name. Uh, and we, we are very careful on Mythbusters to not utilize a product name because we are not doing product testing on a specific product. We are doing it on a category, i.e. bubble packaging. So we stayed away from naming the actual product. And or that, an actual product. And that probably made the whole shoot about 25% longer because every time we said bubble packaging, we'd had about a half a dozen times that we said bubble wrap before. By accident. By accident. <laughs> yeah. uh, I enjoyed your small scale test, but why did you decide to drop a naked tube onto a padded floor rather than a padded tube onto a naked floor? Well, we considered that there wasn't much of a difference from a, from a deceleration standpoint uh, and that it would be a lot easier for us to dial into how much extra cushioning got you extra deceleration by doing it the former way. Uh, it's just needlessly complicated to do it in the latter way, even though it's more accurate to the myth. Uh, and again, when, in small-scale testing, we're rarely looking to answer the whole question. We're looking to dial in to find out if there's anything there anything to go on. Yeah, the logistics involved with wrapping something completely around are so much more time consuming and expensive than just to, uh, to isolate the variables and look at it on the ground. We had the stuff sliced up, we made nice neat little stacks, test over and over, it's relatively fast. Uh, do you guys get a kick out of using products in ways they were not intended? Uh, the engineering here was awesome. and. Uh, yes, yes, we yes. have that. That's uh, that's one of our favorite sayings. Is like, yet again, we're using tools and materials in ways for which they were never intended, and doing things with them that you never expected was possible. Like, oh, there's a certain amount of bubble packaging you could put on me that makes it almost hard to breathe. Like, <laughs> it's not that it's not like I'm in case, but there's just so much weight of it, and I've never imagined having 200 pounds of bubble packaging sitting on my chest. Yeah. How did you decide which one of you was going to take the fall? I think you volunteered, didn't you? I volunteered. I really wanted to try that one out. I don't get claustrophobic. Uh, neither do you. Um, I just thought it, it seemed like something really fun to be able to say one day that I had done. So he did it. Yeah. Adam, how, how high was the brown pants meter for this test? The brown pants meter for this test was high, but not as high as it's been for other stories. I have to say, at the moment that I was being hung up to the full 15-foot position where I was being dropped from, um, and I can't understand at that point, I can't move anything. I am completely passive to this. And that was perhaps the most unpleasant part of doing the story, was not being an active participant in the drop, but just having to wait for it to happen, hearing the preparations happening, Jamie telling me he's about to count down, hearing the countdown. Right there, I was thinking, boy, I really hope nothing goes wrong, and thinking through all the rigging to make sure I feel safe about it. I mean, if I had said stop at any point, we would have totally stopped. Um, but from a, on, on a zero to 10 scale, 10 being the highest brown pants index, I'd say that this was more like a, like a six. Uh, and for comparison, underwater car, where the car went upside down, I'd say that's like a nine. You ended up saying that this couldn't be done, but surely if you used, say, 10 feet of bubble packing, would that would, that would have worked, right? Yes, but within the spirit, see, with this, it's always about what's the question you're answering. And for us, the spirit of this story was an amount of bubble packaging a person could wrap around themselves and safely jump. Now, the amount that we had on me was so much that hanging from it, I would have had trouble breathing if I'd had any more weight on my chest, which tells me that we concluded, well, we concluded after that, that that's the most amount of bubble packaging you could have on you without having to build some superstructure inside. And then once you're building a superstructure, it's different. Yeah. You're going so far afield from the original story that it doesn't have any application. That's true. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, do you think you could ever build a car that had bumpers made of bubble packaging? Wouldn't that be great? I, neither of us understand why cars are made of like nice painted metal that dents and like bumpers that are chrome that scratch. Like if, if I designed a car, it would have big pillows in the front and back and you get hit by it and be like, oh, cool, sorry, bro. You know, 
this whole idea of cars of of like a five mile per hour collision causing fifteen hundred dollars in damage to your bumper is ridiculous to me. Um, yeah, don't and you agree? I I agree. You could definitely build one. I'm not sure that that uh, auto companies would get into it though because they wouldn't be able to charge you for expensive bumper replacement and dented doors and other things. So. Um, uh, if you were abandoned on a desert island and had a pallet of bubble pack arriving on shore, would it help you survive? Well, I would imagine as a flotation device it would be quite nice. I also imagine that it would have some nice insulating properties if the island you'd been abandoned on was particularly chilly. But besides that, I'd, I'd much rather have a pallet of duct tape wash up. I don't know. I'm kind of thinking, you know, with duct tape and bubble packaging. Oh, forget about it. The world's your oyster. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess that's about it for Mythbusters After Show Bubble Boy. See you next time. Thanks.